What's up guys, welcome to episode 47 of Retro Buyer's Guide, I'm Mike, and today we're going to be talking about flash cartridges. Now, if you don't know what flash cartridges are, they are cartridges you can buy. Um, this is one uh, from StoneAgeGamer.com, this is a EverDrive N8 for the original NES. And what this cartridge does is it allows me to load ROMs off of an SD card. Here on the top you can see there's a little slit here, this is a custom label by the way. Uh, that holds an SD card and I can load the entire NES library on as little as two gigabytes. Actually, I think it even takes up less than that, uh, far less with even the homebrews and hacks that are on this card. Uh, you can pop this in here on the top and then load your NES games on your NES. Uh, some people would say, well, why don't you just emulate it? And the reason for that is because flash cartridges allow you to play the game on the actual hardware, so you're not actually emulating anything. Uh, your NES doesn't care if you're playing Little Samson on an original cartridge or flash cartridge, you're getting the same experience because it's just loading the information from the ROM and that's what you're playing. And with retro game prices getting so out of control uh, recently, uh, Little Samson coming to mind is one of the ones that cost several hundred dollars. Purchasing a flash cart is not a bad idea, uh, even though that itself can be a little bit expensive depending on what your budget is. So let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of owning a flash cart and some of the different ones that I own in my collection. So there is one guy that manufactures most of the flash cartridges that I own and that's Krix, uh, K-R-I-K-Z-Z. -Z. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And he makes the EverDrive line of flash cartridges. As you can see here, um, he makes several different ones for several different systems and they cost different prices depending on what you're looking for but they're all super high quality um, I suggest going directly to his store and buying them from him directly or through Stone Age Gamer who I know is an authorized reseller of the EverDrive cartridges that Crix makes. Stone Age Gamer also sells the SD2 SNES, which also supports some of the custom chips that were used in some Super Nintendo games, although it is much more expensive than the EverDrive line. So I recommend doing some research on flash cartridges before you decide which one you want. Now here is the N8 EverDrive that I bought for the NES. And as you can see, I put a custom label, and that is a custom black shell that I bought for it. So let's take a look at it in action. So all of the EverDrives I own have a very clean interface, and this is what it looks like. As you can see here, I've organized them into US ROMs and Japanese ROMs, and you can separate them by letter. Um, I believe there's some folder limitations. Um, you can only put so many in a folder. By pressing right on the D-pad, you can scroll by page and up and down to select the ROM. B will allow you to select and start the ROM and load it into memory, and then it takes just a few seconds, and there you go. Now we're playing Little Samson on an EverDrive cartridge. So instead of paying several hundred dollars to play Little Samson on your original NES, you can pay a hundred dollars and get the entire NES library on a cartridge. And that's pretty fantastic if you ask me. And of course, because it's not emulation, it is 100% accurate. Another cool feature of the EverDrive N8 is the ability to play Famicom Disk System ROMs. Now, of course, because we're not playing on an actual Famicom Disk System, the audio is not going to be 100% accurate. And as a matter of fact, on many of these games, music that was generated by the wavetable synthesis on the Famicom Disk System is completely missing. Still, if you want to experience the extraordinary load times of the Famicom Disk System, the EverDrive N8 can help you with that. Another cool feature of the EverDrive is the ability to play prototypes, hacks, and homebrew titles. This is a homebrew title called Galaxon the Third War. Finally, if you've exhausted the North American NES library, there is a whole world of Famicom games out there waiting for you, and the EverDrive NA can also help you play those on your North American NES. This is Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti.
This is the EverDrive MD, and yes, it works on the Sega Genesis. The MD stands for Mega Drive. And this is another cart by Crix. Um, one thing that's really cool about this one is it has this little button here on top for Sega Master System games that you can use to pause them. If you remember, the Sega Master System has a pause button on the console itself. Much like the EverDrive N8, the EverDrive MD is capable of loading ROMs of any region for the Sega Genesis, the Sega Mega Drive, and of course the Sega Master System like I mentioned earlier. Here is some footage of Hang On. The EverDrive MD will also allow you to play some conversions of Game Gear games. But of course what it excels at is playing Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive games. Here's Gunstar Heroes. One more cool feature of the EverDrive MD is the ability to boot a region-free BIOS for the Sega CD, allowing you to play Japanese Sega CD games. This is a game based on a manga called Cyborg 009. <laughs> This is the Turbo EverDrive, and unlike the other EverDrives in my collection, this one is just a circuit board, so I bought a PC MIA case to house it in when I'm not using it to keep it protected. Let's check it out in action. One neat thing I came across for the Turbo EverDrive are these conversions of NES games for the PC Engine. There's only about 10 of them or so, but they're all really well done. Let's check out DuckTales 2, which is originally an NES game, playing on my PC Engine Duo R. Another great thing about the Turbo EverDrive is it allows me to play TurboGrafx-16 games on my PC Engine Duo R. Normally, the PC Engine Duo R is region locked, but using this Turbo EverDrive, I can load ROMs from the US for the TurboGrafx-16. Let's look at one of my personal favorites. This is the Super EverDrive, and it really needs no explanation at all. This thing can play most Super Nintendo games and Super Famicom games. One of my favorite things about the Super EverDrive is the ability to play RPGs that were never released in the West that have been translated into English. This is a RPG by Squaresoft called Bohemian Lagoon.
Another really cool use for the Super Everdrive is the ability to play the Legend of Zelda remake that was originally released on the Satellaview, which is a modem peripheral that was released for the Super Famicom only in Japan. Uh, it's a really cool 16-bit remake of the original Legend of Zelda, and there's really no other way to play it except for downloading the ROM and loading it onto your Super Everdrive. Being able to play these Japanese exclusives is really awesome, and if I had to recommend one single EverDrive to pick up, it would definitely be the Super EverDrive. However, I do want to reiterate that not all EverDrives are compatible with all Super Nintendo games, and you might want to do some research and see if the SD2 SNES is more up your avenue if you want to play a lot of the custom chip games, um, specifically Super FX games like Star Fox and uh, Stunt Race FX. Um, are not compatible with the basic Super Everdrive, so definitely do some research and look into which one fits your needs more and fits your budget. Finally, let's take a look at the ED64+. Plus. On top here, you've got a switch between North American and PAL territories. Now, I took a gamble on this because it's not manufactured by Crix. I'm pretty sure it's manufactured in China somewhere, but the good news is, is it definitely gets the job done. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it has a completely different interface, but it functions exactly the same. You select the ROM, press the start button, and then it loads it into memory. Here's Banjo-Kazooie. And here's Super Mario 64 playing on an ED64+. Plus. As you can see, it performs flawlessly. Now, I do recommend the ED64+, Plus as a cheaper, cost-efficient alternative to the EverDrive 64. Um, the only problem I've had with it is if you're saving a game, you have to remember to save within the game first and then hit the reset button before you turn the power off. Otherwise, you're going to lose all of your progress, and I had to learn that the hard way, unfortunately. Uh, I went online and then did some Googling and then figured out that's how you're able to keep your games saved on the ED64+. Plus. Other than that, it works really well, and I think it's a pretty decent flash cartridge for the Nintendo 64. That being said, I definitely recommend picking up EverDrives for the other systems whenever you can. Uh, buy them from Crix directly or from Stone Age Gamer again to make sure that he gets the profit from it, not some eBay seller who's likely selling it at a markup. Honestly, I think investing in flash cartridges have been a really smart purchase for me. It's definitely curbed my desire to spend a lot of money on single copies of games that are rare uh, just because the collecting market for retro games has gotten so out of control in the last few years and i understand why because there's a finite number of games out in the wild and there are more and more people who are getting older and they're nostalgic for the games they played when they were younger and they want to play them again and i totally understand that but at the same time, there's a whole other side of the market where people are buying and reselling and, you know, driving the prices up artificially. And, uh, you know, it's just a whole lot of hassle to sometimes track down copies of these games that I loved playing when I was a kid. So I definitely like having a flash cart so that I can at least experience those games and not have to spend a whole lot of money. All right, guys, that's going to do it for episode 47 of Retro Buyer's Guide. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time seeing this channel, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys in the future. Until then, take care and happy collecting.